thinking out loud. So this is what I'm looking at, okay? Section B, this is the first extended response. So just in case you have, um, if you're like me and you do an exam, and the second you leave the exam hall, all the stuff in your brain just whoosh, just goes. It's like, I don't, I don't remember any of it. Um, let me rehearse the question for you so that you can remember what it's about. Um, it's a databases question to begin with. A small video store records details of its customers and the videos and DVDs they have borrowed using vStore, a software application which is connected to a database. The store has a single personal computer attached to a cash drawer, barcode scanner, and printer. The owner of the store uses the computer to generate various financial and statistical reports from the database. The sales staff use the computer when enrolling new members, processing sales, and entering returned movies. The customer is provided with a membership card that includes a barcode representing their membership number. Similarly, each video and DVD has a sticker with a unique barcode, and a separate FPOS machine is used to process all non-cash payments. The following incomplete data flow diagram is an attempt to describe the information system. So copy the diagram above and complete it by adding some labeled data flows. Okay. So before we um, get tucked in, actually I still need this. Uh, what was I trying to do? I was trying to, we did really badly on the data flow diagram on the previous exam, right? So I wanted to bring this up straight away, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a hand because it is the first question out of um, the whole extended response. So had I put it later, I might have just said, okay, we'll work it out like I did before. But this is me kind of giving you a bit of a leg up and saying, look, here are the pieces that I want you to fill in. I just want you to give me the connections, okay? So, the first thing to notice is, well, okay, one, two, three, four. These are the processes, and you can see they correspond to uh, what was mentioned in the um, sort of the prologue to the question, right? So, you want to think about each process. I think they're kind of like the core of the diagram, and then all the rest of it, it's like, well, okay, how, does, how do they relate to each of the processes, okay? Now, in many cases, the processes are kind of um, stuck off on their own and isolated, and they don't relate to the other processes, but other times they do, okay? So, for instance, let's have a think about enrolling new members, enrolling new members. Who does the enrollment of new members? Think back to the question. Who's the actual person who initiates that process? Does anyone remember? It's the sales staff, right? Now, they're all the way down here, okay? <coughs> now, I could have been sneaky um, and just given you these... Uh, icons, logos, right, and put them in no order, okay, but I actually gave you, the, the way that they're arranged is actually kind of a hint, okay, because they're arranged in a way that is probably the most logical and less, less data flows overflapping and that kind of thing, okay. So the sales staff, even though they're the people who are actually initiating this process and making it happen, okay, think about what data they provide to that process. What data do they provide to that process? Think carefully. What data originates from the sales staff and goes to the process? Have a think. Customer. Customer details have to get entered in, right? I assume you know the sales staff are the ones typing that in. But that kind of tells you something right away. That data actually doesn't come from the sales staff, right? It doesn't originate from them. They might actually be entering it in. They might be the participant at that point, but they're not the source of the data. And that's what data flow diagrams are about. Okay, so customer details is right, but they come from, surprise, surprise, the customers, okay? So here's my first um, data flow that I'm gonna put in. Customers, they're gonna provide information to the enrolling new member process, okay? Come in. Morning. Now, um, you could say just customer details, but can we be a little more specific? What else would we put there? I think I, you'd probably get the marks if, I, if you said customer details, but what else could we put in? Like more specifically, some basic stuff. Name. What else might they give? So, say that again. Yeah, contact details. So things like address, maybe. Probably a phone number would do as well. Cool, all right? Like I said, I think customer details would, would get you the mark anyway, but um, it's, as, it's good to be as specific as possible wherever you can, and that's not that hard to think of, right? Okay, now in the same way, 
as data gets provided from the customers to this process, the process sends some data back to the customer, right? Think back to the question, what do you get out of this process? What does the customer receive after they enroll? And think, it's not an object, even though they get an object. This is just a data flow diagram. So what data do they get back? Yeah, that's right, good, well done. Okay, there's the data. So I'm trying to, trying to tease out, right? If they don't get a card back, least, sorry, take that back. They do get a card back, but with regard to the data flow diagram, I'm not interested in what objects they get. I'm interested in the data they receive. Okay, let's keep going. Um, now the enrollment of the new member, right? That process, it doesn't just get data from the customer and then send it back. It has to interact with this vStore, this program, which um, this um, shop has, right? So it's not just between the customer and this process. Where would it go? Where would it send some data to? Any suggestions? Let me ask you this, bless you. When a new member is enrolled, right, do you think that data goes straight to the generation of a report which the owner is going to have and then go through and all that kind of thing? Do you think that would happen immediately? But probably not, but why? Why, why don't you think, I mean, the owner is going to want reports that include member data, right? But why wouldn't it just go straight there? What do you reckon, Jack? Okay, store it for later use. Why? Can anyone help me out? Or Jack, do you have any idea? Why would they, why would they do that? In case you need the member for later, right? I'm, I'm trying to get at, well, how busy might this shop be? Actually, we don't really know, right? But assuming that they get quite a few members, right? And they're enrolling members constantly. Doesn't really make sense to generate a report every single time a new member is enrolled, right? Which is why you would store the data for a later time. So where would we store it? Not that many places to store it, right? In this case, actually, you've only got one database in the whole system, so this is where it's going to go. Okay, it's going to go into that central database. What kind of things would you put there? Well, I pose that to you. What kinds of things are going to go from this process and get stored long term in that central database? What do you think? Any takers? What do you think, Raymond? Yeah, good. Um, everything that was input and output from this process, it's all going to get stored in here, right? Because not much use, say, taking this data and passing it in, and you've got the name, the address, and the phone number, but when that customer comes back with their card, and they swipe it, or it gets scanned, or whatever, they're like, who are you? I don't know who you are, because I don't know who that number refers to, right? And vice versa, if you just stored the member number, and then they swipe that card, it's like, well, great. I recognize you as someone who has a membership here, but I don't know anything about you. Okay. So we would put, I suppose, the member details and their um, member number, or their ID number, if you want to be a little more precise. Okay, let's start moving over to the right. We're talking about these reports, right? Now this is a really easy bit. You can be as detailed as you want, but all I was looking for is this generation of a report, okay? Being that it has to go through to a database, what kinds of ways do we know to get data out of a database? We learned a whole, uh, we spent a few lessons on it. It's like a sophisticated language of its own. What would you use? Yeah, you need to query, right? Um, you don't just go out to the database and you know, ask a question like Siri, okay? You've got to put it in a structured form. So a query is what gets passed from this process to the database. Okay, does that make sense? What gets returned, um, you could say report data or records, either of that would be fine. It's a bit difficult to be more specific than that because it depends on what kind of report the owner wants, right? So I think you sort of have to be intentionally vague there, okay? Right, we're doing pretty well. We've sort of got two processes covered, okay? So let's move down a little bit. 